Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Eric. I work here at STRV. And I will be talking about async effects and error handling in, a, in one way. Of course, it can be done like a million, million ways differently. So yeah, please use some insight from this and adapt it to your app. Uh, cool. I have some notes on my mobile phone, so I'm not check, So I'm not like using Messenger when I, I will be taking there. Cool. So, uh, what's the difference between the async and synchronous effect? I wanted to use the table. I hope everybody can see this. So, usually the synchronous uh, programming style is like, okay, let's for example console log something, and then add two numbers, and then okay console log again, and then maybe move somewhere else and maybe render something to the to the to the browser so this is synchronous and uh, a lot of people say that, that async effects are hard and this is because you can i will write it here with the red so you add two numbers and then user goes somewhere somewhere over here and then you say like Okay, but wait, maybe, maybe we should ask a server if this is correct value, which we counted or something like this. Or f for example, let's imagine the form and user type something and you want to provide them with some values like, okay, this is not correct email or something. So, so we ask a server. So this part, which was, which was synchronous before, continues and waits. So we are here and now we check something else we console log something and we play around with the app. And then we might return it here and it continues. And this is like very simple asynchronous effect. But second option is here. Like for example, we are at login form and we and a user tries to, to log in and the server says should say him like this is not correct, like couple of password and an email. But in between user clicks on the back, on the back button in the browser. So we usually, you, we will, we can say like, it will go here. But this effect was not canceled because it's, as you will see, it's pretty hard to cancel the effects. So this might go something somewhere here. And from here, it will say to our app, okay, but this is not correct couple of password <laughs> and, and email, and it will go here. And from here, our, our app will say, but okay, so let's show in some, some error and we'll go here. And in between the back button, uh, back button uh, triggered some some rendering or some some rotor, ro rotor changes, and it will go here, and here, and this will go here, and here. So this is what asynchronous looks like. Usually our goal is to keep it as simple as possible, which in our app will be simple because we don't. This API doesn't provide like very very complex effects, but let's let's look at what uh, what API challenges await us in here. Mm. Also, let me know one one thing. If the, this thing happens when you split your logic, like this core logic, like we should go there in the router or something like this, if you split it around the app. So if your logic lies in a 10 mounted components, and every component, try, every component try to do his own stuff, this is what we will end up. And that's why we use something, or something, something we call component responsibility, and we divide components in some, okay, so I will make sure this component takes care, takes care of, of my async, and this component should know about anything else. So it's good to know which component should do something and which one should not. So in our API, in commerce layer, there is only one like hard async problem, and this is this is uh, this is the refreshing of the tokens. I don't know if you are familiar with the refreshing of the tokens, but I can try again. Maybe you already tried it. But when you, when you first log into the app, you, you send to the server password and email. And server returns you, you the token. But if somebody would sold this token or somehow later de decipher this, 
and he could, he could use it to access your resources. So there is the security measure that we, with, that we leave the tokens to, that we make these tokens like, like very short time, for example, 10 minutes or two hours. And, but next time, when we want to get another token and say, okay, we are, we are this person who first logged in, but I don't want to save password and email of a user in the app because then somebody could access it. And I don't want to expose password of a user. So what happens is that server returns us something called refresh token. And this, is, this serves instead of, is instead of the password and, uh, and the email. And with this, this refresh token, I can go again to the out token, for example, and get new access token. I don't know if, if it sounds like very complicated. It might be. Uh, yeah. So this is our example. There are also more examples in the real world. And for example, for example, when you try to retry failed requests, you may say like, OK, but the, the network failed us, and we would like to try the request again and again. But if, for example, network fails, what do you do with other requests? Do queue them up and then you play them or, or something like this. And it, it's super easy to get, get lost in this kind of logic, as you will see. Um, okay, another example is when you have kind of onboarding on, or a flow which user needs to type in and then suddenly he says like, but go back and you go back. But you, then you need to sync your store with something and you need to change, change stuff. This can be very, very complex also. And last example is multi-factor authentication. And uh, this is usually done by, by, you know, server sends you some SMS codes and you need to type the, the code. And this can be also very, very complex as, for example, imagine you have some, you have some request, you, you do the request and server says, says to you, okay, but I don't believe it's, it's still you, let's, let's do the multi-factor authentication. And here you need to stop the whole application, you need to make sure that all the requests are, are queuing or they are canceled or something like this. And then, you know, again, this is the flow that would go, but here we are like, okay, we need to show some model and we need to type in some info and, da, 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 and it can go all the way around again. There are a lot of solutions to, to these asynchronous effects. Uh, I, would like to, uh, I would like to show you the tanks, which is a uh, library called Redux tanks. And it's not perfect as any solution to, to the async problems, uh, but it should be enough for us. Uh, it should be enough for us. So this is what, uh, what action, what Redux action looked like before and what Red Hat Redux tanks does is that you can send instead of just plain object with a type and the payload or something like this you can send a function and it will execute the function it can be also async function it can be prom promise based uh, so this lets us write the asynchronous code in a nice way that we can await like more 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 requests and do something with them and then fire to the store, say, okay, this is login successful. Let me show you what I mean. So this is called tank. It's a login action again, but we here we receive, we receive, this is the function and we receive the dispatch, the store stores dispatch, which we can use then inside this, this function. So here we say like login in it. So maybe some, if, any component or any global, there's some, some global state, we can react to that. Uh, like you wanted to show, at, at the header, you wanted to show some loading, for example, of, of login. Mm, so we dispatch the action, then we await the, this promise, this API call, and then we dis dispatch the login success and reducer can again act to that. This is pretty useful. As I said, not, not very, very perfect, as I will show, but should be enough. Mm, and 
there is one feature uh, of this, at, and that is that if you call this action, you will receive anything that you like returned here before. So here, as you can see, we are returning this, this function, this async function, which will return the promise. So afterward in the code, we can, we can await this, or maybe if you used promise, we could dot then or that dot catch on this and then react like locally in the component. Mm, please don't put global logic here because this is, well, if, if I would put some, some very complex logic here in this component and then a, another component would do something similar, it will create this, this image which I showed you before. So please don't. And here's the catch. And finally, you're, I think you are pretty aware of this. Cool. Let's let's do some live coding. Uh, any questions right now? Cool. <coughs> so we would start by npm install Redux tank. And then there is one step which we will skip because it's not very, um, it's not very giving or how would you, how would you call it? The, the Redux tank, as you can see, is, uh, I imported it here and I use it as a middleware. But there is like a little bit more complex setup, setup because we want to also use these uh, Redux dev tools, which you already use. So I will just copy it. So you don't have to care about it very much. And also I was a little bit lazy and I didn't know for sure if I, if, I, if I will get it right. So I would like to show you, yeah. <laughs> I would like to show you um, in this nice new plugin which I discovered and it, and it, it shows the history in an animated way. So this is what actions of customer looked like before. Now, right now I will try to, oh, can you see it by the way? Okay. Uh, yeah? yeah. So right now I will try to uh, like rewrite the login action. So here I just define another constants like init, fail and success, which I will use during the tongue. Here is the tongue as you kind of saw it. Mm, we just get the customer token and then we log in the, the customer. And at the end we we just redirect the router. Mm, also, yeah, maybe you can show the logout. It will be pretty, pretty much the same. We take everything that we had before inside the component and move it here. This gives us uh, opportunity to use, for example, logout from another, another like source or from another file because before we couldn't because it was inside the component. Also, this approach leaves the component more like functional. You don't have to define logic in there, which is pretty good. Mm. Mm, so this is how the layout component looked before. This is how the layout component looked before. And as you can see, I mo moved those things to, to this, to this logout action so we can simply remove that for now. Mm, nice. So this is login page. Mm, this is how it looked before. We took out the, the logic so we can leave that out. Still, we will need to leave this, mm, well, at least maybe if, if you take just one thing from this lecture, take this, please handle local stuff locally and global stuff globally. So this set submitting, it would be nice to handle it here because it's inside this component. It doesn't go outside. So what I did is that I take out the 
the logic, we still can await this uh, login. And then in the catch, we still set the uh, error to, to the global error. Uh, sorry, the error to the global error state, uh, because here we are handling, this also means the val validation, because we are also throwing errors for the server side uh, validation. I'm not really sure if this makes sense. Maybe we can show, show some live, some live real coding, some real live coding. Hmm. Of course, as we change that um, that uh, that action names, we should also adapt store. So here, as you can see, um, we are using the login success instead of, instead of login. Also, if you would like to set something globally, you could listen for this login init, and yeah, we could extend it this way. Yeah, let me show you one thing about this, uh, about these Redux tanks. Uh, this is more so about what they cannot do instead of what they can do. And this is one of things that, why we also have some libraries that are more complex, but also they help deal with more complex problems, which in the end I, I might show if I have some time. So let's see. Sorry about this. Here, so we have this login. Mm, let's say that this get customer took a quite a while to complete. Mm, so let's wait. and we will just resolve that right away. And let's say five second. seconds. So this will wait five seconds before it moves to the login success and then to, uh, to the rerouting. So this was the login action. Uh, let's see if it works. Okay, it, it should wait five seconds. Okay, so this works. Uh, let's see what happens when you try to log in. I click here and then I go back. So we're in e-commerce app, we wait three seconds and it redirects us to the account. This is This happens because the promises and the uh, async functions and also Redux tanks are not cancelable. So you cannot cancel the effect. Every time you use async asynchronous function, you will not we will be not able to cancel it. That's why there are more complex solutions we will get to in the end, but this is the limitation. Also, this was maybe a simple example, but let's try, you can imagine of course some more complex examples when you try to log out and there will be some error, error fail. And then the user, user will see like, okay, I'm logged out. And then it will, it, it will switch back to his account. And this will problem because then he thinks, but I'm not really logged out, right? And yes, I, I wouldn't use app like this, like, like that. Yeah. 
okay, I was not really, <laughs> I was not really coding, so I'm not really sure which one to use. But let's focus on the API client right now. The, I would like to show you how to do a very simple implementation of, of this re refreshing, refreshing of the tokens. Maybe you have tried it. It's, you will see it's not very, very easy. Mm, well, it looks easy, but it's not. Uh, yeah. So this is how the how the API client looked before. Uh, let's see if we can get get it working with the refresh tokens. Uh, they say the commerce layer says they, they their access tokens are valid for two hours, I think. Yeah. So you will not really be able to test it instantly. There are some web servers that you could use that uh, this is like kind of proxy that that uh, you can ma you can change the the responses to requests and you could you could say for 401 and then you could like mock this uh, this functionality um, okay so first we will need this uh this refresh token maybe we could use the same thing as a as with the token There are two types of, of, to of tokens in this layer of commerce. I'm not really sure if you read, read through the documentation. There is this guest, guest token and then there is this customer token. Uh, we will need to implement some kind of logic that if we have refresh token, we will get new customer token. And if not, we will just get another token. Mm. So let's, uh, the token will represent our access token. Let's get the token and if this is not if the token is not present, then let's wait and we will need to use get guest token. Yeah. Oh, we already have it. Nice. So when the API, when this function starts, we will always get the, the guest token if you don't have any. Move this out. Okay, so, so first time we get the response, and now we need to check. Uh, their refresh token works that works like that. That if you make a re request and it returns you four four hundred one unauthorized, you might get the new token if you have the refresh token, of course. Mm. So let's grab. 
let's grab the refresh token. If we have a refresh token, our token, our next token should uh, should be taken from the should be refreshed. Like we are not sending this password again and, and stuff. We will be sending a refresh token. I see now that we don't have that implemented. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just copy that. It's pretty simple stuff. Mm. So what it, what it does is that it takes the refresh token and token again goes over the fetching of the token. Now uses the, another grants type, uh, which is called refresh token. And we also need to add client secrets to the, to the request. Be sure to, uh, to do it because I didn't and it took me quite a while to, to figure out that you need to do this. Nice, and if this is 200, we will just return access token. Also, we will set the tokens. We don't need to ref return the refresh token because actually we will not use it. So the less components and utils know about this, the better. So we will just, if we have refresh token, let's wait, this is called Sorry, I forgot one thing. Uh, we are refreshing token here, <laughs> as I was typing, uh, even before the 401. So let's first check if the response status is 401, right? If not, let's just continue normally. So you're here, it's here. So we now know we made a request. If the response status was 401, means unauthorized. If you have refresh token, let's get another access token. If we don't have the, if we don't have the refresh token, it means that we have a guest token, but it also might be expired. I'm not really sure they don't say in the documentation. I think, but let's get it. Token. Nice. So now we have the new token and we let's retry uh, to get another response. The same. Okay, so this is it. Mm, this is the implementation. Ah, sorry. Token here. Nice. Uh, mm, actually, it's not. 
Nice. Mm, this should work. Do you believe me? Is it good, good implementation? I don't know. <laughs> you can say something now. <laughs> okay, it's it's simple implementation. It's not very good. Mm, there are a lot of edge cases. Mm, so please, if you copy this, at least try to add some comments or I don't know. Uh, this will not work in some cases. So you can try to improve it or build your own. It's better. Mm, but uh, this should work like very, very basically. Nice, we have this API client. Now for the errors. Mm, there are two types of error handling in the React application. One is like in, from inside React uh, and this is done with the uh, like com component uh, function called component did catch. Uh, this will catch only errors from within inside the render methods and also the methods uh, of the component, but not from the like this async handlers or these handlers or so of some input or from anything asynchronous. So this is very limited. It looks like this. Uh, what we usually do, because we haven't found, nobody I think found a better usage for this, is that we bound whole application with this. Then on the component did catch, we just set the state to, to error, and then we don't render the the, the children. So we are not, sh w and we do this because we don't want to show user like halfly correct application. So we, we better show nothing than like something that is not correct. Imagine like banking application or something like this. But this will work only for errors. For example, you, you say uh, some mm, like products.map but the products are not array. This will, this will work for this case, but this is not everything and pretty much this is, I was really disappointed when I saw this functionality. Mm, so this is the first thing. The second thing is, uh, is handling of asynchronous errors. This is difficult stuff. Mm, for the Redux tanks, uh, you will need to catch the errors, try and catch the errors. You can try, you, you can write a try and catch inside, inside those tongues. Mm, you will need to handle all the cases. And also in the component, if you use, if you listen from within inside the component, you call the tongue, uh, you will need to handle all the cases. Otherwise it might just, it might just bubble up to the top level, which you don't want. If you would like to, to have some global global error handler, then you will need to use something something else or create your own middleware. You can try. <laughs> or uh, also there is one solution that you would you would create this special tank which would create another tanks or something like this, and then they it, they would try catch. Maybe you can try to to type something like this. Okay, again uh, this is very simple. Uh, local errors locally, global errors globally. By this I mean if we have a, if we have a component and they have a server like server side validation, for example when you type email and password and there is like this error from server saying uh, the though this couple the, this couple doesn't match, uh, you you want to handle that locally in that form in that form or whatever you use. But if this was like a network request, a network, network file or something like this, or 401, you want to handle that globally. Please don't mix that inside the components. Nice. Let's do some code.
Let's first make, let's make a simple error boundary, which will prevent of this prevent uh, this showing of halfly correct page. False is enough. Mm. So this is the special value, uh, special hook, lifecycle method. Uh, it gets error and some information about error, probably like the stack and some, some something like this. You might want to use it. You might want to log it. Mm. So here, uh, let's uh, set this our state. True. Right. Why is it screaming? <laughs> this is how you fix this line. Um, and then we would like to maybe like to log it to to some service. Uh, right now, maybe console dot error would be would be enough but if you had some some service for error logging like sentry for example then you would this is the place to call it mm. also this is the component you could use it i would probably wrap just wall app with this and for 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 the start but then you could also create some mm, or not create, you could use this for a lo lo lot of components for every page, for example, and then have some some props passed to this and then you could uh, lock a special error message to, the, to your service like. Your service, and then we could, I don't know, use this block of props, the label, and then we could show the error, the message, and maybe also add info, I don't know. A lot, a lot of ways to play around. Uh, what, is what is important, it's inside the render method. So if we have the error, uh, let's show some warning. Sorry, or maybe, yeah, we could not cover from this error. Please refresh the page. <laughs> Don't do this, but <laughs> for now it's, it's good. Mm, but otherwise, if uh, we don't have the error, just render the children. Nice, this is very simple. Uh, yeah, but can save a lot of headaches and maybe some lawsuits, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, sometimes it's good to show uh, that uh, error somehow you could use. Uh, right now I am in this app, I'm using React Toastify. It shows some nice uh, notifications something like this. Mm, you can use whatever you, you like. Um, also, we could use it here and say, <laughs> no, <laughs> you cannot use it here. But yeah, you could show notification. Uh, the notifications, I think they are a good solution for this, those global errors, for example, you get some some 500 error from server or something like this. Uh, why not show it to the user? We had we had error at the server. Mm. Yeah. So uh, let's see if we can use this. Uh, 
if we can use the custom errors, I will just copy this because this is this kind of boiler boilerplate. Um, so we can ignore the first stuff, um, but then we are creating here. I'm creating the async validation error. So in the components, we could uh, listen only to those kind of errors. Like we can. We can ch check afterwards if this error is if a, is instance of async validation error. So I copied the new handle submit. Mm, here, as I showed you, we are set, setting submitting to true. So because this is local stuff, this is actually from from the formic. And then here, I am uh, checking if the error which was thrown is of type async validation error. And if it is, I will save it to the state, as this is something that we want to show the user, and not, for example prop the notification or pop the notification. But maybe this, there, if this is some, some different kind of error, for example, 500, I don't know, uh, we can just say to the user with this toast and have a nice notification. So this is pretty, uh, this is pretty, uh, I don't know how to say it. This is, there, there is a lot of text to this and yeah. Uh, other implementations of async, async FX could handle it differently. Probably this is, I don't know, this is, is not bad, I think. Uh, okay. Let's also make the, the logout uh, possible. Because right now the logout, I think it's inside this this layout, and yeah, we would like to move this to the to the component and to outside the com of of component inside the tank. So let's do this. Actually, I will create I will create logout page. Which we can redirect to if we want to. If we want to log out the user, and actually need to show anything and here let's just call this this logout action with the, which we will get here which is not implemented right now Okay, so it will look like this and we can inject it here. This is in store actions, right? Mm -hmm. And then we could just inject it with the connect.
So this would be the logout page. And then uh, whenever we want to log out, we would just redirect, redirect here. Mm. Uh, sorry? Yeah, sure, I'm not gonna run it. <laughs> it would not work, sorry. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> definitely. Thanks for pointing that out. Any questions right now? Do we have, because async effects, uh, there are a lot of things around async effects. Uh, so yeah, right now it's a good time to ask questions. Maybe you use something else and not tongues. You don't wanna use tongues, you don't, li you don't like it. And here, probably this is the second response. We got first response or the second response. Uh, if we get 401 in the first one, so maybe we can do one more check. The response dot status 401. Uh, let's redirect or. Let's redirect, redirect like this to the logout page and it will logout because this is the second time uh, we, we got 401 so this doesn't make sense to try one more time. Also, there is, this is the place, uh, I would definitely wrap this in try catch block and, but you would need to think about which errors are coming through where. This can be difficult because sometimes you want API, your app API clients to, to bubble these errors, to pass these errors, because you would like to handle them inside the component. Sometimes you would like to take care of it. For example, if this is 401. Also, <laughs> maybe you could uh, create something more sophisticated. This is very simple, but it should work. Mm. Okay, any questions? Ah, yeah, sorry. Um, so Redux tanks uh, are those actions. These are tanks. So those those are tanks, and because tank is a middleware inside the Redux, and because Redux normally works uh, the way that you just send it, send to it plain object with a type so it can process the reducers. But here uh, we have this action and we can actually dispatch this, actions, this action and this middleware inside the Redux will see if we are passing the function to it and if it, if it is the function, it will like call it with, with this dispatch method so we can kind of access the store. Also. Maybe one note, there is also second parameter. Mm, it's, I think it's called get state. And inside here you can get state. So you can also work with this. Make sure that you call it because here we getting the state, for example, we do something like this. And, but then you know, the state might, ch might have changed because this can take three minutes. So then you, will, you would need to call the get state again. So those are tanks. <laughs> but please, yeah, let's, if you don't have any, any questions, no? Uh, let's see. The last part. Oh yeah, homework, sorry. <laughs> uh, sure, make refresh tokens work. Uh, I don't know if you have done this already, but we can try. Then of course, handle errors. You can think of some errors that you can get. You can, for example, in your dev tools, you can click on the, on the offline in the network tab. It will just crash. Uh, your your responses, your requests. So this is a good thing to to try. Also, if you have some web proxy set up, uh, maybe I will post some tutorial to the 
to the channel so you can set up something and, and see for yourself. Those were like very simple cases. If you are up for the challenge and you are like, you know this is the stuff you will love, please try those. Those are like build ups on top of these refresh tokens. So refresh tokens usually have the expiration date. And what you can do is that you will be checking periodically if the expiration date is coming uh, like very soon. And if, if it is, you will refresh the token before that happens. All, still, you will need this logic of refreshing token at that time, because when you wake up the computer, for example, you, you, the request will fire and you will need to handle that. Also, one thing is you can pause requests when you request new tokens. So you can try this by requesting, for example, these products three times in a row instead of one. And if your API client can handle this, good for you. Then you can, you could try if for yourself, if you can come up with a solution to cancel actions. So you, you are not, for example, getting redirected after, after this login with, with waiting time. And then there is this pause every third re request and uh, this is like the mock of your multi-factor authentication. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty hard to do. You can try it uh, like for yourself because this is not something that commerce layer like provides. And of course, this, as this is the main part of your application, usually please test it every time. If you have one tested thing, it should be the API client. Okay, and uh, let me mention two things. First is sagas. This is more advanced technique on how to handle async effects. They use generators under the hood. It's not very easy to like explain very fast, so you need to do it at home. Uh, but you can cancel them, you can stop them, you can wait for actions, you can do a lot of stuff. You can, like this is, with, I think with sagas you can do pretty much everything, so this is a good solution. Also observables and RxGS is another type of solution. They're comparable, but they use different technology under the hood. Uh, observables are also used uh, for different kind of uh, stuff, effects in also in other languages. So this is, I think, good skill to build, uh, but it will take take the time also. Okay, and I think that's it. So if you have any questions. Pretty tired, <laughs> cool. <laughs> and yeah, that's it.